A wonderful good morning all of you and welcome back to another video here from the Off Grid Garage. This morning, well after reading all your comments, thank you so much. I started reading, we had about 50 comments on the video and after I started reading through all the comments we had like 120 afterwards. So thank you very much for all your comments and all your great ideas and suggestions. Some of them were really great. So, um, so easy. I. Too easy, I don't know why I didn't hear my offcut of the bus bar. <laughs> Damn it, it just doesn't fit. It's a 30 millimeter wide bus bar. And I would need to uh, grind it or file it down. And I had just have a little piece of bus bar, maybe long like this. Two holes in it. One hole connects to the screw here inside the terminal and the other one connects to my cable and then the cable would connect to a bus bar which just sticks out and i've got my 90 degree angle there hi hey guys how easy is that great idea great suggestion should have been my idea i'm jealous i'm jealous yeah and someone else said well don't cut out your plastic here of your box to fit the actual shelf here cut out the shelf to fit the box and I I kind of agree with that we shouldn't probably cut into the switchboard we can just make a cut out here in the shelf so the whole switchboard can come a little bit forward I need to do the same on the other side here as well because once this is all done I cannot take out this beam anymore then well some other people suggested don't use any ferrules at all just use the bare copper and connect them to the circuit breakers it gives you more flexibility. While this is true, uh, this is not allowed. We cannot have this fine stranded cable here directly connected into a circuit breaker terminal. It always needs to be terminated either by a lug or by a ferrule. If you have multi-stranded cables, like, like these ones for example, they've got only five or six strands inside. Yes, you can connect them right into your terminals of your circuit breaker. Or if you have if you have building wire, which is just a single core, yes, you can connect them straight into your circuit breaker, but not this fine stranded high flexible cable. Some of the wires may not even touch your terminals when you screw them down. The cable may squeeze out and become really flat, but so effectively you are reducing your diameter of your cable size, which could lead to heat and we don't want heat in a circuit breaker, right? And the other idea which would not work is um, someone said, well, all these circuit breakers are parallel anyway. Why don't you put little gaps into a bus bar and let only little pins left over here and then insert this whole bus bar into the circuit breaker so parallel them all? Well, while this is, while this is a funny idea, it is not possible because we have an isolating circuit breaker. We've got positive and negative next to each other. We cannot just connect all these pins together here. This would not work anymore as an isolator. Then. There are solutions out there with these staggered bus bars you just insert into these circuit breakers and they have their pins in an offset. So they are only connecting every second circuit breaker then to this bus bar. I have not seen them for these breakers though because all these terminals are in one row. Well, I have my RCDs have arrived actually for our switchboard here, for our off-grid switchboard. And you can see these terminals, they are in an offset. So you've got all the neutrals lower and all the actives higher and on the other side as well. So you can easily get these bus bars for these RCBOs here and connect them all in parallel without any cabling effort at all. But the no arcs, no not working yeah, and another good idea was to use a copper pipe a copper bend or an elbow with the right size for the 70 millimeter cable and smash one side flat so it would actually look like a bent ring terminal then yeah another possibility great idea thank you and we also had a few people saying well get rid of this white box altogether and just mount a dean rail just mount a dean rail um just um just, uh, well, just mount a DIN rail here, you know? You can buy these um, air hooks from Siemens and they just hook your DIN rail here in whatever position you want. Guys, I would need 
to build a lot of stands and mounts and crafting. And I would end up building half of the box anyway, just by myself with plastics, with other materials, metal or whatever. There's, there's no benefit of leaving this box away. This one has everything I need. It has the Dean rail mounted, it has the litty at the front and it has the right cutouts for all the circuit breakers. So why would I build another box just by myself, just to not using this one? I don't quite get the point of that. Then you would need to figure out the exact location of the Dean rail here. So they are sticking out at the front and then you would need some sort of cover anyway, because you want to cover your circuit breakers, you know? So you're ending up with a similar situation, just you build it yourself. Well, it's a possibility, right? So. Okay, I have already marked here my two positions where to cut this beam here. And we will take it out now. Now, hang on. We will take another measurement for the second box here as well. And we'll make the two cutouts with a jigsaw. This is only thin metal here. Shouldn't be too hard to cut. I uh, probably have to put some paint or something around the edges then. So it doesn't start rusting there. Because this is just good quality Chinese steel, right? This, this was very easy to cut. Okay, give it a first test. Let's see. <laughs> it just does not fit. <laughs> it's good. I'll cut a bit more off and then it'll fit. I was just too careful. Uh, that was a good tip. I can't believe it. I just got a message from Paul, you know, Bus Bar Paul in Victoria. And one of his customers is actually here in Queensland. And he's got contacts to the Baxter industry company. So they have an account with them. And he has now ordered two of the elbow 70 millimeter ring lugs for me, both left and right band, because the website is not really clear so he ordered both for me and they are on the way already from Townsville down here. So they should be here beginning of next week. Wow. I cannot thank you enough, um, Dan. Dan from Allen View in Queensland here. If you are watching, thank you so much for your generous donation. Uh, I tried to get your address and I sent you something. A couple of beers, right? And thank you so much, Paul, for making this possible so quickly. I mean, the video is just online for a few hours and we already have solved it. Also, thank you very much for everyone else who made great ideas here, great suggestions. I really like this idea with the bus bar fitting into the breaker directly. This would have been my next best idea to connect the cables to the circuit breaker up here. Uh, sometimes you are just speechless and... Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Boys and girls, the first panel is mounted. Someone was complaining I'm using these screws here to mount these panels and not countersunk screws. I like these screws actually here. I like this look actually here. Looks very industrial. So now we have to take a pen and get the outside area here marked on the aluminium sheet so we can make the cutout. But the cutout cannot be larger than the actual box because this part of the box will stay inside of the aluminium sheet while well, this part sits on the outside, right? So we have only we have only a very thin margin. Yeah, see, because this one sits flush on top of the aluminium sheet. There's no gap or something, no safety risk, nothing. And I can still use these two screws here, left and right, uh, left and right, to to mount this cover here, to mount this cover inside these two holes. So this should all work. And then, and then they are clamping in between this aluminium sheet. So that's, that's the plan at the moment. If this all works out, I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Okay, so these are now the outer 
dimensions of this box or the switchboard, right? So what I need to do, I need to go inside now and probably cut cut a few millimeter inside. It doesn't really matter how much, I think. Um, I better start with a good portion of leftover material and I can always cut something back later on if I need to. And it should be fine. So I would say if we are going nine millimeters inside, because this is really the outside, the outside outside, right? And we don't want to, we don't want to cut there, otherwise the switchboard will fall through. So this is really the outside, probably five millimeters on each side. If I go five millimeter inside to start with, and then cut this out, will be sweet. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe I f***ed up now. <laughs> and this is the uh, yeah. This is the inside. It says it here. Oben innen. Okay. So here you can see the frame now. This is what I leave. This is what I have to leave standing, and I'm cutting inside this area here, just inside, right? So we've got this frame sitting here on this side of the... Does that make sense to you? No? Yes? Maybe? Yeah, to me neither. I'll give it a go. Okay, so boys and girls, I've got the first cut out ready. This is where the switchboard goes in. And it basically comes here so like this, yeah, it fits really nice. There we go. So now you can see the switchboard is half out and half in. That was the plan from the beginning to have it like this. If you mount it on the outside of the panel here, it is fairly thick. And this is only half of the size now, which sticks out. When we drill all our holes here and have the cables connected to the circuit breakers inside and everything is covered. Well, I haven't got a second switchboard here, but I will make the cutout now, the same as this one. And then we use this one here as a template to see if it would fit here as well. The only thing I had to modify is these screws here. They were a tiny bit too short. So I just took some longer ones here. And everything is good now. All right, guys, I think this is how far we go today with this little video. Big step forward because I wasn't sure if this actually works or not, but it looks like it's working perfectly fine. This design may change again at some stage i don't know yet but at the moment i like it ah here something came in the mail angled 35 millimeter ring lugs apparently i'm not allowed to say bend it anymore someone lectured me and said well bend it is not a word if you bend it it's bent he's right but you know i don't really care if i say bend it you know what i mean right and these ones here See, they fit perfectly into the terminal of the circuit breaker here. Look at this one here. This is how it looks like then. That's cool, right? I like it. And this breaker goes in here. So like this. And the cables are straight coming off here and going to the battery compartment here. Negative, BMS and positive of the battery. I can use the same at the bottom here as well. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here, for everything you're doing, for all your comments this morning on the last video. It helped me out a lot. We have several solutions now for connecting these circuit breakers here, and some of them are really, really good. They would work well. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.